We now learn about sign tables, and in particular in this video, we're going to learn how to make sign tables for quadratic functions, or quadratic equations. So let's get started. Let's say we're given the following. y is equal to x squared minus 1. Well, the idea behind a sign table is to study the sign of this function, meaning we want to determine three things. One, when this function equals to zero. Two, when this function is positive, And three, when this function is negative. So that's what a sign table summarizes for us. At a quick glance, we'll be able to tell all those three things. So let's go ahead. The first thing we need to do is to determine when this function equals to zero. And to do that, we need to solve x squared minus one equals to zero. And in this case, it's quite a simple quadratic equation. We can do that using factorization, and we can factor this using the difference of two squares. Indeed, we can write this as x plus 1 times x minus 1 equals to 0. And we quickly see that this quadratic has two roots. Those are x equals to negative 1 and x equals to 1. So I'll just go ahead and box those. Those are the two roots. Now, we can write this quadratic in root factored form, meaning we can write this as y is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 1. And that's the format we will always use when studying the sign of a quadratic function. So now that we've done this, we can go ahead and make a sign table. So here's how we do it. We start by making a generic table, like this one, and in the upper left hand corner we write x. That's the variable. Now we highlight the fact that we're studying this function over all real numbers, so from negative infinity, which I write here, all the way up to positive infinity, which I write there. I now add to this table two very important things, the two values of x at which this function equals to 0. So that's at x equals to negative 1, and at x equals to 1. So I place these here, negative 1 and 1. I now add two vertical lines to this table right below those two values of x I've just added. And that therefore creates several columns to our table. Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and start studying the sign of this function. And we do that in several steps. The first step is to look at the first factor. We have x plus 1 as one of the factors. And we write x plus 1 right below the x here. And now we study the sign of x plus 1. Well, x plus 1 is equal to 0 when x equals to negative 1. So we write 0 here, right below the negative 1. And for all x values less than negative 1, x plus 1 will be negative. So we place a negative sign to the left of that value. To the right-hand side of that value, in the two columns, we add two pluses, since x plus 1 will be positive for all values of x greater than negative 1. That's our first row done. We now draw a line, like so, and we create a second row. And we now consider the second factor, that's x minus 1. So we write that below, x minus 1. We now study the sign of x minus 1, in exactly the same way as we did for x plus 1. Well, x minus 1 equals to 0 when x equals to 1. So we write 0 at x equals to 1. For x values less than 1, x minus 1 is negative. So we place a negative sign, or a negative symbol, in each of those two columns to the left of 1. And for x values greater than 1, x minus 1 is positive, so we add a plus symbol here. Now we add a double line, like so, and this is to highlight the fact that we're reaching the final row. And in this final row, we're going to be interested in the product of the two factors. So the factors were x plus 1 times x minus 1. And so that's the actual function. Remember, x plus 1 times x minus 1 equals to x squared minus 1, and that's the actual function that we're studying. So the sign of this, well, let's see. Between negative infinity and negative 1, it will be negative times negative. So that's going to be positive. So we write a plus here. 
at negative 1, it's 0. Between negative 1 and 1, it is positive times negative, so that's negative. At 1, it's 0 again. And for x values greater than 1, it's positive times positive, so that's positive. And we're done. We've just created the sign table for x squared minus 1. Now, what this allows us to state is the values of x for which this function is either equal to 0, positive, or negative. For instance, using this sign table, we can now state that x squared minus 1 is less than or equal to 0 if x is between negative 1 included and 1 included. Or perhaps we need to solve the inequality x squared minus 1 greater than 0, in which case we can see that this is positive as soon as x is either less than negative 1 or x is greater than 1. So that's how we make a sign table and how we use one. Let's look at another example. Let's study the sign of the function 3x squared minus 3x minus 6. And let's go ahead and call that y again. Okay, now the first thing we need to do is to find the roots of this quadratic. And to do that, we need to solve 3x squared minus 3x minus 6 equals to 0. Now, this tutorial isn't about how to solve quadratic equations, so I'm going to solve this very fast. This quadratic has the same solutions as x squared minus x minus 2 equals to 0, and we can solve this using factoring or by factorization. Indeed, we can write this as, that this is the same as x plus 1 times x minus 2 equals to 0. This quadratic therefore has two roots, which are x equals to negative 1 and x equals to 2. Done. Those are the two roots of this quadratic function. Now, what this allows us to do is to write this quadratic in its root factored form. That means we write it as y is equal to 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. That's the root factored form. And now that we've done that, we can use the root factored form to create the sign table. To create the sign table, we start in exactly the same way as we did previously. We start with our generic table, like so. In the upper left hand corner, we write x. And again, we're studying this function over all real numbers. And we highlight that by writing negative infinity here, all the way up to positive infinity there. Now, the values of x at which this quadratic equals to 0 were, we found them here, x equals to negative 1, so we write negative 1 here, and x equals to 2, so we'll write that there. We add vertical lines directly below those two values of x to create the columns of our table, and now we get busy studying the sign of each of the factors. So looking at the root factored form, we can see that the first factor is x plus 1. So we write that in our table, x plus 1. We now study the sign of x plus 1. Well, x plus 1 equals to 0 when x equals to negative 1. So we write 0 below negative 1. And for x values less than negative 1, x plus 1 is negative. So we go ahead and add a negative symbol to the left of negative 1. For all values of x greater than negative 1, it's positive, so we add plus and plus, like I've just done there. We're now done with that factor, so we draw a line, and we now focus on the next factor. The next factor is x minus 2. So we write that in our table, x minus 2, and we now study the sign of that factor. Well x minus 2 equals to 0 when x equals to 2. And for all x values less than 2, it's negative. So we add a negative symbol in both columns to the left of 2. And for x values greater than 2, it is positive. So we write that as so. We now draw another line. And we add the coefficient, which is multiplying all of this. Remember, all of this is being multiplied by 3. So we have 3 here, which is always positive. So that's going to be plus, plus, 
and plus. Finally, we add a double line. And the double line, remember, is to highlight the fact that we're now talking of the final answer, the sign of the function itself. So we're looking at 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 2. So for x values between negative infinity and negative 1, we have negative times negative, which is positive, times positive. So that will lead to a positive. At x equals to negative 1, it will equal to 0. For values between negative 1 and 2, we have positive times negative times positive. So that's positive times negative is negative times positive, that's negative. At x equals to 2, it's 0. And for x values greater than 2, we have positive times positive, which is positive, times positive again, which leads to a positive. And we're done. We've just constructed the sign table for this function. Now once more, what this allows us to state is that this function is positive for x values less than negative 1 or x values greater than 2. Likewise, this function is negative for x values between negative 1 and 2. And of course, it also allows us to see that this function equals to 0 at both negative 1 and 2. So for instance, let's say we had to solve the inequality 3x squared minus 3x minus 6 less than or equal to 0. Well, all we would have to do is look at our sign table and see that this is negative for x values between 2 and negative 1, and it's equal to 0 at negative 1 and 2. So the solution to this inequality would be all x values which are greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 2. Let's look at one last example. Let's study the sign of negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. And once more we can go ahead and say we're studying the function negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. So the first thing we need to do, remember, is figure out the values of x at which this quadratic equals to 0. And to do that, we solve the equation negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6 equals to 0. Now, once more, this video is not about how to solve quadratics, so I'll solve this rather fast. This has the same solutions as x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals to 0. And we can solve this by factoring, which leads us to x plus 3 times x minus 1 equals to 0. This therefore means that this quadratic has two roots, which are x equals to negative 3 and x equals to 1. I'll go ahead and box those two roots. We'll need them later. And of course, this allows us to write this function in its root factored form, and that is y is equal to negative 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. And that's the root factored form that we'll use in our sign table. We now construct a sign table. Once more, we start with the same generic table. In the upper left hand corner, we specify the variable, that's x. And of course, we're studying this for all real numbers, so from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. This quadratic equals to 0 when x equals to negative 3 and x equals to 1. So we add those to our table, negative 3 and 1. And we add the two vertical lines beneath these two values of x to our table, therefore creating the columns we'll need. And now we go ahead and study the factors. So when we root factored it, we can see that the first factor is x plus 3. So we add that to our table, x plus 3. We now study the sign of this factor. x plus 3 equals to 0 when x equals to negative 3. So we write 0 beneath negative 3. For x values less than negative 3, x plus 3 is negative. And for all x values greater than negative 3, 
x plus 3 will be positive, so we add a plus sign in each of the two columns to the right. We're now done with that factor, we add a horizontal line, thereby creating a new row, and we focus on the next factor, x minus 1. We add x minus 1 to the table, and we study the sign of this factor x minus 1 will equal to 0 when x equals to 1, and for all x values less than 1 it will be negative, so we add negative, negative to the left of 1. It will be positive as soon as x is greater than 1, so we add a plus symbol to the right hand side of 1. We're now done with that factor, we add a line. We now focus on the coefficient which is multiplying all of this, that's negative 2. So we write negative 2 in the next row, and regardless of the value of x, negative 2 will always be negative. So we add negatives all over. Finally, before multiplying all of this, we add a double line to our sign table to indicate that we're dealing with the final result. And we now look at the product of all of these signs. So the function is negative 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. And so for x values between negative infinity and negative 3, we'll have negative times negative, which is positive, times negative, which is negative. At x equals to negative 3, this will be equal to 0. Then for x values between negative 3 and 1, we'll have positive times negative, which is negative, times negative, which turns into positive. At x equals to 1, this is equal to 0, and for x values greater than 1, we'll have positive times positive, which is positive, times negative, which leads to negative. And we're done. We've just created the sign table for this quadratic. Now, once more, this allows us to study the sign of this function. Let's say, for instance, we needed to solve the inequality negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6 less than 0, then we'd be able to answer that looking at this sign table. We can see that this function is negative as soon as x is less than negative 3 and x is greater than 1. Similarly, maybe we would have to solve negative 2x squared minus 4x plus 6 greater than or equal to 0. Then, looking at our sign table, we can see that the solution would be all x values between negative 3 and 1 included. And there we have it. That's how we construct and use sign tables for quadratic functions. Thank you for watching, and I really hope that helps.